A volcano responsible for one of the most violent eruptions in history is showing signs of life. Scientists know little about Mount Pektu because most of it is in North Korea, one of the world's most secretive countries. Seth Doan is in Beijing and he spoke with two researchers who are getting a one of a kind look. Seth, good morning. Good morning. For the first time, Western scientists have been granted unprecedented access to this sleeping giant to try to determine when or if it could wake up. It's a panoramic postcard few outsiders have seen. It was quite a special experience. The first time, very much a voyage into the unknown. And for British volcanologists James Hammond and Clive Oppenheimer, traveling to Mount Peck II was the opportunity of a lifetime. This is such a big volcano that we know very little about. So little is known because it's located in isolated North Korea. In an unprecedented move, the two were seemingly chosen at random, invited by the reclusive government through a series of intermediaries to work with local scientists. After small earthquakes beneath the volcano stirred fears it could erupt again. More than 1,000 years ago, Mount Pektu blew. Tons of debris, including rock and magma, were expelled, and a thick layer of ash blanketed much of the region. It's hard really to imagine the scale, but it, you're talking about something like a, a million nuclear weapons all going off at the same time in terms of the, the energy that's involved. The eruption changed the landscape dramatically, leaving behind a three-mile crater, today known as Heaven Lake. It's that landscape the scientists are studying. When you try and reconstruct what a, a past eruption was like, it's, it's a kind of forensic science. So there's a lot of information to glean just from the nature of the rocks. The project has not been easy. Sanctions imposed on North Korea have made it difficult to bring in advanced technology. And they're constantly under the watchful eye of the government. Still, they've made three trips so far. And their glimpse behind the curtain has been eye-opening took part in the national celebrations and went to the mass gymnastics that they have. And we were made to feel very welcome by the Koreans. Research on PEC2 has been a rare opportunity for the West to engage North Korea. Oppenheimer and Hammond hope that science can help bridge a divide where diplomacy has so faltered. What we're doing, I think, is rather unprecedented. and. I think that's an important and valuable way to move forward and try and improve relations. The researchers and their North Korean partners hope to have their results published in internationally recognized journals, but we may have to wait a while. The research is expected to last for another two to three years. Gail? Seth, we thank you.